Hey, welcome back to Life on the Wrist. Hope you're doing well. Today, we're gonna continue our series where we speak about the different types of movements that power our watches. We've already made uh, videos on the manual wind movement as well as the automatic wind movement. And today we're going to focus on the quartz movement. These movements are found in a variety of different watches within the watch market today, as well as some watches from um, the vintage market. And it's a perfect, and I think this is a great way where we can continue our series and educate you guys on the different types of watch movements. Before we get into that, if you haven't already, as always, subscribe to our channel and like this video. Uh, we make what we make uh, videos on different topics within the watch uh, world literally anything you can think of we're trying to make videos on it so we'd love for you guys to subscribe so we can communicate about different types of topics that we talk about and hear your thoughts this is a platform where i think we can really share our passion and um, talk about the lives of the watches on our wrists so diving into our topic the quartz watch movement as you probably know is powered by a battery Manual wind and automatic watch movements are powered by a mainspring. If you haven't seen those videos, I'll link into this. I'll put a link in the description to those videos so you can see our explanation of them. So it's powered by a battery, and that battery sends an electrical current through the the watch movement. Now, within every quartz watch movement, there is a little piece of a quartz crystal that is inside of that movement, and it's normally shaped in a, a forked prong. So I don't think you I don't know if you've ever seen this, but um, Perhaps if you play guitar and you know what a tuning fork is, you basically hit it on the side of your guitar case, for example, and listen to the sound and you're able to tune the fork, or tune your guitar based on that sound that's being emitted from that fork. Um, that fork is vibrating to emit that sound, which is exactly what happens with that quartz crystal. The, um, the battery sends an electrical current through, that, through the movement, which ends up at the quartz crystal, vibrating the fork at a specific frequency and if it's done at a specific fr frequency, the fork can vibrate um, at a consistent rate. And this is all from the, I'm um, probably, gonna, probably gonna butcher this, but it's from the patioelectric effect. Um, so a little bit of science there, you can look that up if you're interested in, in learning more about that. Um, but that's, that vibration is what allows for the watch to keep time. Now, as always, we're gonna dive into the, uh, the history of the quartz watch, just give you a, a little bit of an overview of the way in which it came about. So in the late 50s and 60s, um, companies like Patek Philippe, Piaget, and Omega were competing to make the first quartz watch movement. The reason for this was because the quartz, a quartz watch in theory could be the most accurate watch that you will ever, ever wear. So they created the Centre Electronique Chronologie. Um, so this was based in Neuchâtel, and this was the first time that Swiss watch companies came together to try and make the first Swiss quartz watch movement. But at the same time, Seiko, was Seiko, uh, a brand that we're probably very all familiar with, um, was competing to make a quartz watch themselves. And they were the first company to release a quartz uh, mo movement. Seiko released their first uh, watch movement in, the late, in late 1969 called the Astron. Um, this was um, obviously a massive release from them and ended up changing the watch world forever. And then eBausch uh, released their Beta 21 movement, their Beta 21 watch with their Beta 1 movement in at the 1970 uh, Basel World Fair. So this was 1969, 1970 was when everything started exploding when it came to quartz watches. Um, obviously because of their accuracy quartz watch and I guess the novelty of owning a quartz watch, quartz watches became extremely, um, extremely popular and kind of exploded um, within the watch world. and. As you may know, this led to an era called the quartz crisis, where quartz watches really took over and mechanical watches took a backseat and ended up almost dying out completely. Um, we'll make a whole series on quartz crisis because I think it's a very fascinating time and something that we should all think about when we're, when we're discussing watches. So that gives you a little bit of history. Now you know how it works. Um, let me give you the pros and cons of why I think, um, what I think about the quartz uh, watch movement. So. Some of the pros. The first and most obvious is that the quartz watch movement is the most accurate movement that you will find in any watch. Um, simply by the fact that it's being able, that the fork is vibrating at a consistent rate and you can adjust and you can set the battery to make sure that that happens always. It's not made up of a bunch of gears and levers that can have you know, human error as long, along with manufacturing error in it. So it's one of the most um, accurate movements possible. Also, it's considered more shock resistant 
um, compared to manual wind and, and automatic watch movements simply by the fact that those components are pretty basic and there aren't um, you know intricacies within the watch movement that may be um, bumped out of uh, place if you end up you know it's being a little bit more active with your watches and the last is that it's pretty easy to maintain um, your, your, your quartz watch battery is going to last for quite a long time and the only way you, if that ends up stopping all you do is you take it to a watchmaker and they end up replacing the battery so um, I think ease of use is a great way of describing uh, quartz watch movements they're very very simple and um, something that I'm sure we all have considered and, and owned in the past some of the, the cons is there is a slight stigma with quartz watches um, it's unfortunate but a lot of the times people don't um, rate quartz watch watches as high as they do with manual wind or automatic watches. So I think it may just be because of the fact that sometimes there isn't a lot of effort and time that's, there isn't as much effort and time that's put into a quartz watch, the manufacturing of a quartz watch versus an automatic or manual wind watch. Um, so there's a slight stigma when you wear them. I think each to their own. I'm not going to pass judgment on someone just because they're wearing a quartz watch. I can talk watches with that person no matter what, so, um, but there is that slight stigma that's going to come with owning a, a quartz watch. Um, also, I, the connection with your watch is not going to be as, um, in my opinion, I don't think it's going to be as close. You're not winding the mainspring of the watch, you're simply just putting it on your wrist and wearing it. Obviously, the automatic wind is a little bit similar, but you're not transferring your energy into the watch, which may on some philosophical level, your connection, the connection between you and that watch may be uh, reduced. However, at Life on the Wrist, we like telling stories about the times that you have worn these watches. So that could be um, the way in which um, you create that connection with that watch. Perhaps you've taken it on some great adventures throughout your life, which most of us probably have, and that's, that's the connection that you hold with that watch. As a great example, my grandfather uh, recently passed away and um, I end up inheriting his watch, um, which is a quartz powered, uh, which has a quartz powered movement. Um, so on some level, I'm, there's a stigma that, like I said, there's a stigma with having that watch. But at the same time, the fact that it was owned by my grandfather and I remember seeing it on his wrist, that's what is important to me. And that creates the connection with me and the watch. Um, and the last thing is, and this is just based off of um, the maintenance issue that I came up that I discussed on the pro side if you need to make sure that you do not let the battery of the watch sit in the movement uh, for an extended period of time after it's um, finished uh, after it's um, died um, what can happen is the battery can end up corroding the movement and destroying the watch completely so you need to make sure that you're maintaining the watch and not just leaving that battery and if you end up um, just forgetting about it for a while so I hope that helped you I hope that gave you an overview of what the quartz watch movement is the pros and cons and a little bit of history so that you can take that to your next uh, watch conversations you have with someone um, if you've made it this far as always and you didn't do it at the beginning of the video please like and subscribe to this video share it with your friends if you have some you have a, a bunch of uh, watch geeks like us um, would love to grow our, our, our community comment below what you think about quartz watch movements tell me if uh, you have any pros and cons that I missed perhaps and um, would love to hear about about them and discuss them with you guys i'm sure if someone's watching this video and just trying to decide if they want to buy a quartz watch those comments would be very very helpful and on that note i hope you guys have a nice rest of your day